Hey there, superstar. Uh, this is um, Eric Hollingsworth. I'm a two-star diamond coach uh, living here in Greensboro, North Carolina. I hope you're doing well. Uh, for those of you who know me, I know I'm not there physically, but please know that I am there in spirit with each and every one of you. Well, Amanda uh, wants me to talk about the, uh, the power of the three vital behaviors today. And um, you know, I've talked about this before, but I'm going to um, put a new spin on, on things based on some challenges that I've been facing over the past few months. Um, so, as many of you know, I've, I've said this story before. I, I've been a coach for five years, and within the first couple of years, by me engaging in the three vital behaviors, that's basically, you know, working on my fitness, working on um, involving myself in personal development, and consistently sharing my story and inviting people to join me um, in, in my journey to get fit, um, I've been able to build a business. I have been able to reach out to other people and empower other people. And I grew from, you know, just me and my good friend, Angela, to we have about oh, close to six, 700 coaches on our team now and then we're kind of like a nub we're not getting any love from up above so we're not in the thousands yet but we're proud of the fact that we've grown to that size just just based off of what we're doing from the top down um many of you have also heard you know like i said how i, I quit my job and how I've, I've had this luxury of freedom and whatnot and it's really kind of cool because it's um, i'm able to really redefine you know who i was i'm coach eric no longer am I Eric, the guy that's sitting behind a desk every day doing something that he doesn't like to do. I'm, you know, I'm Coach Eric, and this is what I live for. I live for the opportunity to um, work out and to test my resolve and to push myself and to invite other people on the journey with me, no matter where they are in their fitness journey, and to grow as well. And all of that is attributed to just consistently doing the three vital behaviors each and every day. So everything is going hunky dory. I've, I've I've said this. I've said variations of of that story on many occasions and whatnot. But uh, everything kind of went came to a a quick and sudden and unexpected halt this uh, August. Uh, I was in the best shape of my life uh, this summer, just coming off of a Cancun, the Beachbody Cancun trip, and because of that, brother man wanted to make sure that he looked good. So I did the um, Shanti's uh, Insanity Max 30, followed by a couple of rounds of Body Beast. So I was cut, I was jacked, I was feeling great, feeling just really confident of, of, about where I was in my in my fitness journey. And a lot of my other friends looked amazing as well. It really feels good to say, hey, I'm 40 something years old and I can take my shirt off and feel good about myself. And I can hang with those 20 some year old coaches out there and, and, and feel good. Um, and like I said, all of a sudden, Boom, life happened. Just a routine uh, physical examination. You know, I'm walking in with swagger, talking to the doctor, giving a high five. You know, hey man, I've got a six pack. I drink Shakeology every day. I'm good, you know. And he said, well, yeah, Eric, you know, everything passed with flying colors. But there's one little thing. We see something on your blood test and, and we want to make sure that that was just an anomaly. So once you come back and let's retake the test. I said, sure, no problem. Didn't think anything of it. Um, and then we went back, he took the movie, we did the test again, and then the results were even worse. So this began a, uh, an, a, a very challenging chapter, an ongoing chapter in my life, which literally, I, I basically questioned the existence of all of the things that meant the most of me. I, I felt that these things were, were, were being taken away from me. Um, I'll, I'll get into that later. But basically, everything culminated from from um, from August to November. I, I had test after test after exam, and each one brought up more questions, more uncertainty, more fear, uh, and just more just an amazing amount of stress. Uh, and it affected me from head to toe and inside out. My my business, the way I approached my workout, everything. Um, and then it, everything just kind of culminated on, uh, on November of, of last year where I'm sitting here talking with this pathologist, uh, not the pathologist, the urologist, 
He says, well, Eric, you know, we're reviewing the findings of your biopsy. And um, unfortunately, you have prostate cancer. And unfortunately, you have a two and a half time, uh, times greater chance of dying from prostate cancer um, uh, than your counterparts, simply because you're African-Americans. African-Americans, for some reason, it really runs rampant in, in my race. So that hit me like a ton of bricks. Then he said, well, you've got three options. We can cut it out. We can burn, cut it out through surgery, burn it out through radiology, or we can just do active observation. It's not a fast growing cancer, but you know, it can just be, it, it can be gr slow growing or dormant. And then all of a sudden takes off. And then, um, you could die in five years. You can die in 10 years from this, or you could never die. We don't know. So I'm thinking, wow, none of those options sounded good at all. I was like, okay, what the hell am I supposed to do? And it's still, it, I was still in shock, but here's what got me when he said, okay, well, Eric, you know how well, we were talking about the active, um, uh, op surveillance. He said, well, how old, how old is your daughter? I said, well, my daughter's 17. He said, well, Eric, if you die in five years, don't, don't you want to be around for, for your daughter? Don't you want to give yourself a chance to be around for your daughter? And I'm thinking, holy crap, you know? Now, now you're talking about taking my daughter away from me. So, you know, first we talk about taking the core of who I was. I'm Coach Eric. How the heck am I supposed to coach other people if I have cancer? How the hell am I supposed to? You're taking away from what, what I live for. I, I live for challenging myself and, and working out and, and, and eating right and, and, and being that example for other people. And now you're talking about, I mean, I can live, I can, I can deal with that. And I can work on that. But now you're talking about, about taking away my pumpkin, my little girl. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. At that particular point, I fell to my knees uh, at, in the doctor's office. I'm thinking, okay, this is just overwhelming. What the hell am I supposed to do? What the hell am I supposed to do with this information? I'm in the office by myself thinking, oh my God, you know, you're taking away all of the things that I love the most. I mean, just a few months ago, my world was so right. Everything was going right. I was, I, 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 I found this awesome opportunity with Beachbody and I just did a very simple, this three vital behaviors, very simple to build the things that I, I've always wanted out of life. And then now all of that is taken away from me because of this crap. And now you're taking my, now you're taking away my little girl. I didn't know what to do. I had no idea what it is that I, that I, I wanted to do. Or, or I didn't know what my next step was. And I was just sitting there crying in the, in the doctor's office, grown man crying. And then for some reason, for some odd, no, this is going to sound strange and odd, but I felt like, okay, I've been here before. I've been in this position before where I have just, I, I feel as though that, that I just, I, I run out of options where I've just given everything that I could give. I can't do anything else. And then usually when I'm in that position, a voice is in my head. And that voice that said, you know, it was Shanti saying, Eric, brother, dig deeper, man. You're not finished. You need to get up. And then I'm hearing Tony Horton in my other ear, other ear. You're not done yet. You know, you need to bring it, brother. You need to bring it. You need to get up right now. This guy is not going to tell you that, you know, that you are going to lose the things that we worked so hard for. No, you're going to bring it. You're going to dig deep and you're going to fight and that is exact i'm sitting here yelling that is the it, that was that's been my attitude ever since then and from then on everything that i I've, I've done it's it's been with this positive attitude and i'm going back and i'm looking at all of the things that i have learned in my journey from my personal development those are the things that have that that have um that has helped formed the person that I am to mentally, emotionally, and spiritually prepare myself for whatever decision I decided to, to make. And I just I'm gonna give you an example of some of the things that I've 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 list that I've you know I've shared before, but now it's personal to me. Like for example, one of the things that I do with my daily personal development is I'll read just quotes from famous authors from Maya Angelou. She says you may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. You know, very powerful statement. Those statements like that feeding my soul each and every day to help me 
keep myself centered. And then don't get it twisted. There have been days that have been very, very dark, very, very uncertain. And But it's my personal development that helps keep me center. And then more importantly with my personal development is that over the years, I have gravitated towards where I needed the, the, the most uh, the most nourishment. And then that is my spirit. My spirit really, really needed um, nourishment. Um, and I have really grown, grown uh, close to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, it has helped me to form a foundation to be better, uh, to, to more effectively reach out to other people. And in the business that we do, there is no safety net. You guys know that. There, I mean, hey, there's there there's no uh 401k plan. There's there there's no there's no guarantee. You know, the only thing that we can do is instead of looking down and, and worrying about whether or not we have a safety net, what do we have to do? We have to look up at that at the potential that we have and we soar high and we look up at like I said of all of the wonderful things that are are that are that, that we are are bestowed as a result of you know, living our dream and daring to dream. Um, so it's the personal development, just day in and day out, just feeding myself, thinking that, okay, I'm doing this just to become a more effective coach for my other, for my other people. But honestly, I was actually changing as a result of me just doing part of the three vital behaviors every day. Um, and then the invitation process, um, you know, initially, I mean, like I said before, the invitation process is just all about, you know, reaching out, meeting new people so that, you know, they can see what you do because you're sharing your journey. You can see what you do. They may in turn, you know, uh, decide, hey, I want to be in your challenge group and you sell them a shake, sell them a challenge pack. They become advocates. They get in shape. You empower them. They become coaches. And the, the cycle just repeats itself over and over again. That's That's the way that, you know, I'm, I'm, my, my mindset was, well, now I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, because now I'm just looking back now, looking back to reflect some of my closest friends that I have, and that's some of my best friends are a result of the invitation process. And some of these friends, I have a friend now who is a fellow coach who is from um, right outside of DC. Um, he traveled three hours from where he was down here to Greensboro to visit me for the day, just to talk, just to take me out to lunch and to pray with me. And then he drove three hours right on back, back home, you know, much love to that brother. And then we have like Darren Olean, Darren, he's the freaking creator of Shakeology. When he found out that, that, that I had cancer, this guy messaged me and say, Hey Eric, you know what? Um, I've got this, um, um, you know, here, here, here are some things that I found out that might be helpful for you. And then I asked him questions about his amazing book that he has, by the way, um, um, the, the five life forces. I can't think of the exact name of the book right now, but you know, I was able to actually ask him about some of those things and actually those actually helped me, uh, in my cancer journey. Um, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, uh, but just like I said, just the invitation process, what it does, it, I've pretty much just created a tribe of like-minded individuals who understood the value of, of, of health and wellness, who all understood the value of staying positive. You want to surround yourself with positive, like-minded people. These are people who were firmly grounded in their own spirituality. They may not all be Christian. They may not, but that's fine. You know, but they are still walking a very theologically similar path to, to, to that of mine. And the, the, the wonderful thing about it, guys, is I can actually feel the, 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 the concern and the love and, and the prayers that everyone has been um, um, projecting my way. So when the doctor, uh, you know, says, OK, Eric, you know, you are cancer free. When he told me that last week, I said, oh, brother, I know that. I already know that. God already told me that. I already know that this was beat. Eric, we're giving you the highest prognosis that we can give you. There is a 98% chance that we you will not have any problems. You are going to fully re recover. Like, dude, I've had too many of my friends and my Beachbody family sit down and pray with me and pray for me 
praying for victory, praying for total healing, praying for recovery. I totally get that. I totally understand that. Now, don't get me wrong. I was praising his name, but I was doing that from day one. I was already doing that from day one. So I'm just pumped. So now I'm looking back and saying, oh my gosh, all of these three vital behaviors that I've had, that I've been doing all of this time has prepared me for this particular moment. I have placed myself um, in a, I'm, I'm basically, I have given myself a fighting chance to overcome and kick cancer in the ass by the three vital behaviors. And the thing is, what links me and my, and my journey to you is that we all have, we, we are all facing adversities, big or small, big and small in our lives. But what I'm here to tell you is that the three vital behaviors, it's not some perfunctory thing that you want to do, you know, every, every now and again. If anything else, please understand that these things can literally change your life. It can save your life just like it is saving mine right now, just by engaging in those three things each and every day. One of the things, I'm, I, I want to back up a little bit. One of the things that the surgeon told me, he said, Eric, your surgery went flawlessly. And one of the reasons why your pathology report came back so perfectly is because of the fact that you are in uh, great shape. Just the way that you're in shape is amazing. Minutes after I woke from surgery, I got up from the operating table and walked to my hospital bed. They said they have never, ever seen anyone do that. I'm like, well, obviously, you have never worked on a Beachbody coach because that's how we roll, right? <laughs> so I just want to just kind of share this testimony with you guys in hopes that um, you understand the power of the three vital behaviors and how it can change the game for you, not just externally to, to, to meet those immediate needs that you have with, you know, growing your business or, or quitting your job or getting that vacation or paying off debt. It can do it's it's it, it can do those things, but it can do amazingly awesome things as well. So with that said, please know that I love each and every one of you guys and just thank you so much for taking time out to listen to me and um, if you need to reach out to me for anything i'm here with my mom <laughs> until february god bless i'll talk to you later